This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install memory into an HP Z420 workstation. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com and click on the blog page on the top of the website and search in the article Z420. It's going to bring up an article that says HP Z420 Gaming Computer and Other Upgrades. Click on that. This is an awesome guide if you have a Z420 workstation and you're looking for upgrade ideas, as well as we do show you the part numbers to the memory that you would typically want to install in HP Z420. Now, we don't go through all the UE DIMMs. We only do the registered modules, and we do pick the high clock speed because we typically like to optimize our systems for gaming. So um, use this as a resource guide for upgrades. All the information is free. We don't sell anything. Um, it's just an awesome place to uh, to bookmark, you know, if you ever want to upgrade your Z, uh, Z420 workstation. Uh, we also, on the bottom of the page, do a bunch of how-to videos on, on how to install these components. So if you buy something and you want to know how to actually install it, uh, we have videos on our page uh, that will help you do that. All right, so let's get to the actual install. A little bit of information that you'll want to know before you install memory into a Z420. Um, it supports up to eight memory modules. There are eight slots on the system board. It supports up to 64 gig of DDR3 memory. Now, if you've installed more than 64 gig, let us know. We're happy to, um, to have that information in the comments below. Um, it supports U, E, or R DIMMs, and you cannot mix them. Um, if you're wondering where you would find out which version you have, look at your memory module that you have installed existing and look at the end of the speed. So if it's, a, let's say, for example, a 12800 module, uh, look at the end of, the, of, of that number and see whether it has a U, E, or R DIMM. Um, so if you're trying to uh, piggyback off of existing modules, you'll want to match that, otherwise it won't work. So if you have E DIMMs, install more E DIMMs. If you have R DIMMs, install more R DIMMs. Um, again, it supports DDR3 memory, so that's the 8500, the 10600, the 12800, or the 14900 modules. So let's say you're pulling out all of your memory and you're going to install new memory. Um, and you're wondering what speed memory should you go with. Um, so your processor determines how fast your memory will run. Um, so what you'll want to do is go into uh, reboot your system, go into the F10 setup. And under system information, it's going to tell you what your processor speed is. In our case, we have an E5-1603 uh, version 1 proc that runs at 2.8 gigahertz. So we can go to intel.com and we can search the specifications and then it's going to tell us how fast uh, of memory that system will or that processor will support. Um, so um, we're going to go through and we're actually going to show you how to do that. Um, so we found that it's easier just to go right to Google because Google searches Intel site better than Intel site does. So we're typing E5-1603, 2.8 gigahertz. And sure enough, the top search item pops up and is Intel's website. So we'll scroll down. We're going to make this a little bit bigger for you. And we're going to find memory specifications. So this particular processor supports up to 375 gig of RAM. And that's if your motherboard or your man or, or your or your um, basically your motherboard supports that. So in, the, in our case, the Z420 max is 64 gig. And it's this is really important right here because it tells us that it can support up to 800 megahertz or 1066 megahertz. So what that is saying is we can install 8500R modules and then it'll max the speed up. But if we go past 8500R or 8500, uh, let's say we install 10600 or 12800 or 14900, it, no matter what, it's going to clock us down to 1066 megahertz. So the processor is determining that. So if you have... Um, a faster processor installed um, that should show 1333 megahertz or 14 or 1600 megahertz or or um, uh, 1866 megahertz, which would be great. So if you have that, um, try to uh, maximize the performance based off what your processor will support. All right, so here's our Z420 workstation. This is a used system, and you know it it, it shows it. It's all scratched up, but it works great. Here's our four four gig modules that we're going to install. Now these are 12800R modules. They are going to clock down to 1066 megahertz when they are actually installed. So before we install these, we'll put the system on its side, remove its side panel like so. 
I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. And so we see our two memory banks. All right, so this is the 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 label on the side panel. Now that you could look at this, but this is a bunch of nothing. You don't want to, you don't really want to look at this cuz if you look at the motherboard, these numbers don't even match up with what's stamped on the motherboard. So um, you can look at this all you want, um, and it says to install HP approved memory. Uh, it's not really necessary unless your system's still under support um, or warranty. If that's the case, then maybe you'll want to do that to keep your warranty intact. But uh, other than that, I mean, this is this isn't even right. So we're gonna install four four gig modules, but before we can do that, we do have to remove this memory cooling fan. So there's a little thumb lever that we can pull and loosen. And it's easiest to use two hands and, and pull that little lever and then shimmy it up left to right. And there is also a cable that we need to unplug that gives power to that fan. And so once you remove both of those, you'll have access to both banks of memory. Now we're going to install our modules into the four black slots. Now before we do that, we're going to actually open up those slots so that it's easier for us to click our memory in because we're going to shimmy our memory in from side to side. So we're going to open up all four of the black slots. If, for example, you were going to install all eight modules, you just populate everything, you know, match the exi or, or make sure you use matching modules so you don't get any parity errors. So now we're actually ready to install, install our modules. So there, there's a little notch in the middle of the module, and you'll want to line that up with the memory slot. So now you go ahead and just push the memory module in and shimmy through uh, each side, and it'll click into place. And we'll just continue that on. If you try to push it down in the middle, it doesn't always catch each clip properly so do one side then the other side and it will click both times you'll know that the module is securely in place all right so we have two more modules to install and again click each side in and you are in good shape all right one more module Okay, so now we've got all of our modules installed. We do have to put our memory cooling shroud back in. You'll want to start by plugging the fan in. Now, there's not a lot of space in the system. So, um, you know, however you get this done, this is great. I don't really have a good angle to show you on this, on this, on this part of the video, but it, it plugs in just like when you removed it. And then... You'll want to put your cooling shroud in. And I use two hands, and basically, as soon as the clips are in a place, you know you're in good shape. All right, so everything is installed. Um, we're, go we're going to go ahead and put our side panel back on the system. And now we're ready to basically turn it on and verify that our memory modules are working properly. Now, at this point, we're going to the F2, uh, F10 setup. But if you have beep codes, um, you probably mixed modules that you weren't supposed to. Um, so just double check that you're not installing U, E, or R DIMMs together. Make sure they're all the same. Um, also make sure that the memory that you purchased is compatible with your system. Again, go to greenpcgamers.com. We list the part numbers that are compatible. All right, so here's the F10 setup if you were lucky enough to make it into here. We can see we have 16 gig of RAM installed. It is running at the 1066 megahertz. It's clocking down because of this processor. We see DIM1, DIM3, DIM6, and DIM8 are populated. And our memory is working perfectly in the F10 setup. Now we've booted into Windows 10. And we're just going to verify that it's recognizing all the memory. So we're going to right click on start, go to system. And we see all 16 gig of RAM installed. So um, our install went pretty well. Uh, we went from 8 gig to 16 gig, which is a pretty big jump in, in performance for us. 
Um, if this video was helpful to you, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, that helps us out big time. If you have any questions, make sure and comment below. Also, we do monthly giveaways on our Facebook page. So like GreenPCGamers.com on Facebook, and you will qualify for those monthly giveaways. Thank you so much for watching.